today. Wow. I'm, uh, I'm going to make it. I'm going to get it out. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, anybody that, that has ever heard me do this before knows I always start in the beginning. So if you'll bear with me, I'm going to do that again today. Hallelujah. And if you'll put up the first slide, please. And in the beginning is really in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved, moved, like he's moving here today. He moved on the face of the waters. Praise the Lord. And nothing was happening until verse 3 showed up. And God said, let there be light. And the power of the spirit of that word, it happened. It happened to the knee. It's happened in your life. It recreated a new spirit within you. Hallelujah. The seed, the incorruptible seed that is the word of God found its way into your heart and the spirit of God caused there to be light and a new being was created, one that never existed before. Hallelujah. Born of God. Praise the Lord. And God said, let there be light and there was light. And you notice if you... Without the verses, I'm going to go on to verse, or slide three. God was busy for a week. And God said, God said, God said, God said. And the Spirit of God moved. Hallelujah. He got down to, well, okay, here is where in slide four we connect it. It didn't just end in Genesis. It was picked back up in the New, in the new Covenant. It's the same word, right? The word of God was spoken to be written, and it was written to be spoken, right? It's the same word, same Holy Spirit, praise the Lord. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Praise the Lord. Now we come back to Genesis in Genesis 126, number 5, And God said, Let us make Cynthia. Let us make Gary, or Marcy, or David. Let's make him in our image, after our likeness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. All the earth. Now, keep that in mind as we move forward with this. This may be seem like a little weird message today, but that's okay. Most of mine are weird. But over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Praise the Lord. 128. And God blessed them. And he said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, subdue it, subdue it. You know, for the longest time, I don't know why, I guess I never really focused on it, but I always thought when the Garden of Eden was put in place, that it just covered the whole earth. I mean, he said, you know, that he created heaven and earth for us, right? But no, I don't believe so. I think it was just a little garden over to the side. Maybe not so little, but it didn't cover the earth, is my point. But they said, he said to them, subdue it. Now here's what, and let me again preface everything I say today. I'm not here to try to convince you of anything. And you may hear some stuff you've never heard today before. It may not line up with what you thought or believed. That's okay. Just don't throw it out. Think about it. Pray about it. And see if you come up with something different or the same. Okay? I'm not trying to convince you or take anything from you. Hopefully give you something today. Praise the Lord. So man was to subdue the earth, right? So he's not supposed to just stay in his little garden. 
But I believe he's supposed to subdue it, replenish it, take charge. He's the boss, right? He has the dominion. Hallelujah. They, they, uh, Adam and Eve were put in the garden. That was their home. Everything. God worked six days. Six days to prepare a place for his man. Hallelujah. And praise God, he... Well, we'll get to that. I'm getting ahead of myself. They were to subdue the earth, right? Hallelujah. And he dwelt in Adam and Eve. And, and this is another point I want you to understand. When you read the Old Testament, consider the New Testament. The Old Testament looks forward and, and is prophetic, right? It's foretelling, telling what God's got in plan, in mind, in bits and pieces. It's a mystery. Nobody really understood it, but it's foretelling. Now, when we get to the New Covenant, the New Testament, we can look back and fill in the gaps, I believe. We can see what God's intent and purpose was from the beginning. And I believe Genesis chapter 1 and 2 is the end state for us. That's where he began. You think he's just going to set it up and abandon it and go another direction? No, 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 no. He doesn't fail. Hallelujah. That is our end state. Praise the Lord. Now keep that in mind. And Adam and Eve, even though it doesn't say it in Genesis, in on verse uh, seven, I think you'll see, or slide seven, I think you'll see God's intent and purpose in Adam and Eve's life. He said, "I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people." Hallelujah. That was his intent then, as it is for us now. Amen. And Adam had never been to the University of the Garden, right? He had no training. He had no knowledge. In fact, he's like a little baby. He's just formed, and God breathed into him the breath of life. He was, though, the temple, I believe, of the Most High God. God was to reside in him, dwell in him. The Spirit of God in him was to lead him into all truth, to show him things to come. That was how he was going to dominate and ha exercise his dominion in the earth. Praise the Lord. That was his intent. Well, you're back there now. Hallelujah. If you've made Jesus the Lord of your life. That was the way Adam and Eve were to operate. Praise the Lord. And if you look at Leviticus, all the way back in, in slide, I think nine that is, or eight rather. He's... He said in Leviticus 26, 12, I will walk in and with and among and will be your God and you shall be my people. He said it all the way back there. So his plan and purpose was the same as it is for us today, for Adam and Eve to simply listen to the voice, obey the voice, and walk out the life of God in the earth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Genesis 131, slide 9. And God saw that he, what he, everything he had made, behold, it was very good. Hallelujah. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. And verse 10, or slide 10, boys, sorry. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Notice Hebrews 4.3. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Everything God did, he did it in those six days. And you're going to see in just a minute how that he looked ahead and saw you and I, knew what our need would be, and prepared it. He didn't just prepare for Adam and Eve. He prepared for his family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything that we ever need. Didn't he say, my, my God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, right? So there is an unseen world out there that's just packed jam with everything you'll ever need. But the only way you're going to get it is by faith. It's by simply taking his word, believing his promises, and receiving them 
And you know what? It just gives him great joy to give it to you. Hallelujah. He is more blessed to give than to receive. Where do you think that came from? He said to me a few weeks ago, he said, Gary, he said, I have never, ever asked you to do anything that I've not and already and still do. He said, and he took me to the scripture where Jesus said in Matthew, he said, somebody asked him, what's the greatest commandment? He said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And God said, that's the way I am to you. I love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength. Everything I have ever done has been for you. Hallelujah. Six days he worked. He knew you were coming. He knew you were going to show up. He knew you'd be here. And he prepared everything in advance. And it's in a place called the realm of his glory. It's in a place called the realm of the unseen. Hallelujah. It's no wonder Paul wrote, and he says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. For the things which I see are temporary, but the things that are unseen that I can receive by faith is permanent. Hallelujah. Well, gets me going. Praise the Lord. Slide 12. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he had rested from all which God created and made. Six days he worked, and the seventh he rested. Now, think about it. What was the last thing he did on day six? He made you. He made Adam and Eve. He made his man. Well, looks like there's nothing left for Adam and Eve to do. Praise the Lord. God did it all, right? Hallelujah. And then he came to live and reside inside of them to enjoy Enjoy them and each other. Praise God. That's the relationship that we have. Everything is prepared. I mean, how can you read Matthew 6 and not get that impression? He said, "Mm." (laughs) He said, don't even think about what you're going to eat or wear or what you put on. Don't even think about it. Your father knows you have need of these things. But what? And this is the kicker. Seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom. Well, he's already said, I give it to you. It gives me good pleasure to give it to you. And in Christ Jesus, you've been made the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. So it's a matter of whether I'm walking in it or not, right? Or whether I'm believing it or not. And as to whether I receive it or not. He's not holding back. It's all there. Praise the Lord. Regarding the Sabbath, slide 13, Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man. It was made for you. In other words, that seventh day, Adam and God were supposed to take a vacation, enter into a, an eternal period of rest. Hallelujah. And everything Adam did. I mean, you know, think about it. If Adam didn't like that mountain where it was, all he had to do is say, be thou removed. Tree, be plucked up. Isn't that what Jesus did? Isn't that what he said? You're back there. That's where you are. That's who you are in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 4.9 says, there remains a Sabbath day. It's waiting. There remains a Sabbath day for the people of God. Are you a people of God? Yeah, it's for you. Praise the Lord. All right, back to Genesis 2.16, number 15. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, blessing and calamity, you shall not eat it. For the day you eat it, you shall surely die. Hallelujah. You know, think about it. 
Adam and Eve knew one half of that equation. We just read it a few minutes ago. Everything he made was good. <laughs> That's all they knew was the good side of that equation. He just didn't want them knowing the bad side, praise the Lord. He said, but in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. I believe that when God created heaven and earth, they were together. God and man were together. But when Adam and Eve do what they're about, we're about to read about, it was separated. And Adam didn't die physically at that point in his life. In fact, his body lived another 930 years. But he died in the spirit. And death does not mean cease to exist. It means the absence of life. Hallelujah. So all of a sudden, that voice he constantly heard inside of him was no longer there. So all of a sudden, and we'll read this in a minute, all of a sudden his eyes, spiritual eyes closed, his natural eyes opened. Now I'm not saying his natural eyes weren't open before, but he was such a dominated in the spirit realm, he didn't pay much attention to it or he had to figure out before that he was naked. Hallelujah. Let's go on. I'm getting ahead of myself. He said, but in the day you eat of that, you will surely die. Now, in Genesis 3, let's jump to Genesis 3, 4, where Eve was having this conversation with a snake. And, but the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. That sounds like a contradiction. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God knowing the difference between good and evil, blessing and calamity. Wow. Your eyes will be open. But I, I want us to focus on something here in the next slide. Notice this. Genesis 2.17, you shall surely die. Genesis 3.4, you shall not surely die. Now, everybody in this room has experienced this. You know that, right? We go to God's word and it says, by his stripes, you're healed. My body speaks to me and says, no, my knee hurts. Or something hurts. Or the, I have a headache. Or whatever it is. No, but the word says, by stripes I'm healed. Which am I going to believe? And there's a voice whispering, you better do something. First, is, here's what you do. Call the doctor. No, but he said, seek the kingdom first. Now you better... You're going to die if you don't get help. Have you ever been there? Or you wake up one day and you realize that you got more bills than you got money. And you think, I better go work some more hours. That's the first thing I think of. I've got to go do something to earn more money. But he said, seek ye first the kingdom. And listen to that voice that's going to lead you into all truth, who's going to bring to your remembrance everything that Jesus has said, who's going to reveal to you the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So what do I choose? It's before me, life and death, blessing and cursing is sitting right in front of me. And my flesh is going to want to go the natural way. And the devil is going to try to encourage me to do that. Because he's in, he's in our ears 24. He can't get in God's ears anymore, remember? He doesn't have a place there. So God knows he's defeated. The devil knows he's defeated. But nah, he's here in the earth telling you how bad you are or how you're going to die, how you're going to not get healed or how your needs are not going to be met. And sometimes he gets more real. Many times he gets more real because he's so loud. The circumstances are so big because we look at him so much and fear begins to develop that God's not going to do it. And the devil is saying, not this time. God's not going to. You know what you did yesterday. You know what you did. Praise the Lord. Well, that's what the serpent did to Eve. Let's go on here in verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good, notice this. Everything about that tree. She saw something. She's, she's seeing something here. She saw it because he's whispering in her ear. And then she looked and she saw that the tree was good for food. It's good. 
Of course it is. That's the way God made it. And it was pleasant to the eyes. Of course it is. That's the way God made it. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. So, she's got this word from Satan. Now, has she got more faith in what God told them? Or does she have more faith in what the devil told them? Hmm. You ever been there? I have. So she took, the tr- she took it and ate it. And that was an act of faith in what the devil told her. She, in other words, the word that she heard from Satan was more real to her than what God did, so she acted on it. Now, if I would have taken God's word, which is the truth, what she heard was a lie. If I would have taken God's word and said, okay, I'm going to do this. That act of obeying the word is called what? Faith. And that act pleases God. Without those acting on his word, you cannot please him. But this one pleased the devil. Look at the end result. She died. They died spiritually. They acted, but got not what Satan said. They got what God said. Praise the Lord. So, I don't want to leave you confused with this. Her act created, ended up creating fear. That's where the devil takes you. Because the next few verses, it says they were afraid. They discovered they were naked and they clothed themselves and they hid themselves when they heard the voice of God because they were afraid. They had never had fear before. But now they do. Why? Because they listened to a lie. And it took them down the wrong path. Hallelujah. And Genesis 3-7. Slide 19, I think. And the eyes of them both were opened. Now, wait a minute. The previous verse said she saw. She saw something before. She saw that the... Fruit was good for food and pleasant to the eyes and desired to make one wise. She saw that. But then they fell, and this here that says their eyes were open. What are they talking about? The spiritual eyes closed because they're separated from God. Heaven and earth are no longer together. And now all they have to rely on are their natural eyes. Can you imagine what a shock that was to their system? Up to that point, they had heard that still, small voice. They have moved and walked in the love of God, in the peace of God, in the joy of God, and just prevailing in the garden and beyond, if you will. But now, that's gone. They have no prior training like we had, I had for 27 years before I came to the Lord. I didn't know how to operate in the world system. But now, bang, their eyes are open. What are we going to eat? What are we going to wear? What are we going to put on? And God had told them, you're going to have to toil. You're going to have to earn it by the sweat of your brow. It's all up to you now. You made your choice. You've got to make your own way. Hallelujah. But thank God that's not true anymore. Hallelujah. The point of this, what I'm trying to get you to see, we have more than one set of eyes. We have eyes that we can see in the natural, but when you're born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, you've got eyes you can see into the spirit realm. Hallelujah. Now, remember what Jesus said. He said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he's going to lead you into all truth, and he's going to show you things to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, that's where, we can op- that's where we are to operate, right? We're, in fact, we're not even of this world anymore. We've been raised up and made to sit together in the spirit realm, in the heavenlies, in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Colossians 3.1 says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, not what's beneath. Set your mind, your affections on things above. 
Focus on those things. The Passion Translation said, when you, Christ's resurrection is your resurrection. Hallelujah. You, with that resurrection, you've been detached from this world system. You've been placed into a heavenly kingdom. Praise God. And that's where we're to live. Hallelujah. And in that kingdom, if we'll receive the abundance of that grace that he's given us, and that gift of righteousness, we reign. We reign as kings. Because that's what he's made us, right? We's made, he's made us kings and priests unto himself. Praise the Lord. That's who you are. You're not just under the thumb of the devil anymore. You're on top. Amen. You've been raised up. You are in a dominating position in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And I, I can tell you, Jesus didn't lie when he said, Have the faith of God, or the God kind of faith. For whosoever shall say unto that mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he will have what he says. And then he turned around and, and put his finger at them, and he said something. Well, you think this is going to work for Jesus? <laughs> he, he said, and I say to you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive, and you shall have it. Praise God. It's got to be so. It's got to be so. And he said, while you're praying, if you've got ought against any, forgive. Okay, here we are, back to that giving position. I'm giving forgiveness. And in giving forgiveness, I'm receiving forgiveness. Hallelujah. The path is open. The road is clear. The channel is open. All of heaven is yours and mine. Praise the Lord. If we want it. If we want it. But sometimes it just seems like we're too busy. You ever feel like you're too busy? Wow. Okay, back, back to this. Praise God. When Adam and Eve ate of that fruit, that is exactly when the law of sin and death came into play. They, they just walked it out. They defined it. They acted it out. Hallelujah. What was the real source of the sin? Was it eating the fruit? No, it was not believing what God said. It was their unbelief. They believed a lie more than they believed what God said. That was the core. That was the root of it. And then the act of eating it consummated the deal. That is the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Read James chapter 1. That's what he says. You're enticed, you're led away by your own lust. Hallelujah. That's what Eve did. She saw. She had heard, you will not die. And then she acted on it. It leads to the act, right? And the law of sin and death is in play. Sin is conceived and death is is the result. That's where they landed. That's where everybody after them up to Calvary landed. Praise the Lord. As by one man sin entered into the earth. But praise God, that's not the end of the verse. You know what it is. By one man life came. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The law of sin and death but listen to this, slide 22, Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through, the, through death he might destroy him, that is the devil, that has the power of death, right? For the law in Romans 8 verse 2 says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free 
from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Sin has no more dominion over us, no more rule over us. And unfortunately, most of the Christian world, that's where they stay, fighting sin. But listen, we're beyond that. We're walking in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We're the dominators, not the dominated. Yes. Hallelujah, because the greater one lives in us. And greater is he, right? Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Now, I, this sounds like we're changing gears here, but we're not. The next slide, 23. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten, full of, of the Father. Full, full, full. Overflowing, full of grace and truth. Praise God. Praise God. Now, go back to that, not you, but think about the slide where God said you would die. Satan said you shall not die, right? God's word that says you shall die is the truth. And that's what happened. But now we have the recorded word of God through Jesus that says so much more. It's still the truth. It's the way. It's the life. Hallelujah. Now, in John 10, we quoted earlier, verses 9 and 10. In verse 9, it says, Jesus said, I am the door. He that comes to me shall come in and go out and find pasture. Right? Hallelujah. Now, do you believe that or not? That's the question. Because what he said is so packed full of love, of grace, of truth, you can't miss it unless you choose to miss it. Hallelujah. It's not the, here the word became flesh and dwelt among us, but every word of God is the same. It is incorruptible seed. It will produce. It doesn't have a choice. It cannot do anything but produce once it's believed. Hallelujah. That word that's on your paper of your, the paper of your Bible or your phone, it's full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. So if I take that word, whatever it is that I'm seeking the kingdom first for, it's full of grace and truth. And when I believe it, that word will manifest itself. The next verse after 14, which I don't think I have here, verse 15 says, And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten. Hallelujah. Right? We beheld his glory. Now, let me tell you something. We talked about everything is prepared in the unseen realm, in the spirit realm. We're over in the natural realm. When we take the, the word of God is the connection. It's the connection between the unseen and the seen. When we take his word, we may not believe it, that he can get that to me, but he's, going to, he's already provided it by grace. For by grace are you saved, through, through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, right? It's a gift. It's a gift. You don't work for it. It's a gift. So when I take that word, I have a decision to make. Am I going to believe it or not? And sometimes on my first reading, there's no way that can happen. My brain won't accept it. But if I will keep looking at it, if I will keep thinking about it, if I will keep meditating on it, if I'll start speaking it and declaring it so my ears can hear it, what's coming is I hear it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, right? But I keep looking at it. I keep thinking about it. Whatever I think on, the more I think on it, the bigger it gets. And sometimes it's the bill that's due tomorrow that I don't think I have the money for. What am I going to do? How am I going to pay that? <laughs> so if I keep looking at the Word pretty soon and thinking about it pretty soon, that's going to get bigger. But most of the time we just can't go to the Word, take that Word and believe it. 
because the noise outside is bigger than what we're seeing with our eyes and hearing inside. We've got to shut it down. And we start by meditating on the Word. Isn't that what he told Joshua? Isn't that what he told David in, in chapter 1? Joshua 1, eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of what? Your closet, your desk, your car. It shall not depart out of your mouth, but you'll meditate in it whenever you feel like it. No. He said, meditate in it day and night, day and night, day and night. Why? Because the devil is coming at you day and night, day and night, day and night. Just like he was God before he got the boot. God booted him out. It's our turn. Right? Praise the Lord. We take that word. We meditate. We think about it. We walk around saying it. Somebody asks you how I'm doing. How are you doing? I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Praise God. How are you doing? I'm blessed. How are you doing? I'm prosperous. My other need is met in Jesus' name. Do you see it? I don't have to see it. I know it's right there. And it's making its way over here. Hallelujah. So I keep meditating on it until the noise inside gets bigger than the noise on the outside. Hallelujah. And then when it shows up, (laughs) what are you going to do? More than likely, it's just going to take your breath away. Hallelujah. What are you doing? You're beholding His glory. That is moved from the uns to the seen. And the glory of God is shown up. That's why I said the unseen realm is the realm of glory. Hallelujah. Because it moves into the seen realm and God gets all the glory. All I've done is take him at his word. And you know, I heard the Lord say that to this, this to me more than one time. He said, just listen to me tell you. Just believe me. Just believe me. Just believe me. Now, those of you that are married or have kids or whatever or in a relationship, you should try that with your wife or your husband or your kids sometime. Get them, say to them, just believe me. And when they don't believe you, what does that do to you? That really impacts you in here, doesn't it? When I know the person I love with all my heart doesn't believe what I'm telling him, it bothers me, especially when I know I'm speaking the truth. How do you think the Father must feel? And that's why Jesus said in John, I believe it's chapter 15, he said, if you really love me, you'll keep my word. You'll keep my word. In fact, he said in John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will. And it'll be done. Hallelujah. It's the abiding thing. Jesus said in John 8, 31, he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. That word continue is the same word as abide. It means stay. Park. Don't move. Stay there. Stay there. Meditating, thinking about, speaking. Hallelujah. And the faith will come up inside of you. And you will see that. You will be able to see with those spirit eyes what you're believing for. And pretty soon, you'll be able to see it with your natural eyes. And the glory of God has risen upon you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I hate that clock. But it is 1130. So, Father, we thank you for your presence here. Thank you for your goodness to us, Lord. Thank you for having ears to hear and a heart to receive today. I believe, Lord, everyone watching, everyone here, everyone listening anywhere will receive from you today. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Praise the Lord.